Hi, welcome back to part two of this lecture on operational semantics in the program analysis course. So what we'll do in this second part is to now um, define the abstract syntax of a language, which is called SIMP for simple imperative language. And this will be the basis of eventually defining the semantics of this language. Um, but before going into the semantics, we first have to define the syntax so that you know what kinds of programs are actually part of the language. So SIMP is a toy language. It's not a real programming language that people have implemented and used, but it's um, just a simple imperative language that has been created for the purpose of um, yeah, showing how you can define the meaning of a language. It nevertheless has a couple of features that you'll know from um, normal programming languages. In particular, it does have assignments, so you can assign some values to some variables. Um, it supports sequencing, which essentially just means that you can have um, one statement followed by another. It also has conditionals, which means you can have branches and depending on the outcome of some conditional expression, either go this way or that way. It'll also have loops, so you can execute things um, many, many times. And in terms of types and variables, the, the only real variable that we have are integer variables. So everything is about integers and performing operations on these integers. Now, in order to define what is part of this language, we're going to define its abstract syntax. So we're not going to define a concrete syntax. I will use a concrete syntax um, on some of the slides, but what we'll define here is just the abstract syntax and the concrete syntax, um, yeah, you can derive it from the way I'm using that language. So looking at the abstract syntax, we can say that a program has, um, well, we call a program P and each of these syntax rules is defined using one of these um, rules that you see here. And we're saying a program can um, be one of three things. So either it's a command and we'll define what this command C is, or it is an expression and we'll also define that, or it's a Boolean expression. So the expressions E are integer expressions. They do evaluate to an integer number, whereas the expressions B are Boolean expressions, which means they evaluate to either true or false. So let's look more into these um, three ingredients of programs, commands, expressions, and Boolean expressions. And let's start with the commands. So one kind of command um, is a command that consists of two other commands. And this is um, what you'll use to have not just one single command in your program, but um, chain them together. And this is therefore called a sequence. So you essentially take a command C1, put a semicolon in between, and then have another command C2. Another kind of command is about assignments, where we have some location into which we are assigning, let's call this L, and we are assigning the value of some integer expression E. So what this is, is an assignment of an expression E to some label or location L. Then I also said we have conditionals in our language, and the abstract syntax for this is that we have a node in the abstract syntax tree called if, which has three children. One for a Boolean expression that determines whether we go left or right. And then two commands, C1 and C2, that are executed depending on whether the condition is evaluated to true or false. So this is very similar to um, an if statement that you probably know from um, every programming language. Um, so this is called also a two-way selector. Next, SIMP also supports loops. More specifically, it has Y loops. So those are um, trees in the abstract syntax tree that have um, a while node with two children, one for the Boolean expression that determines whether we go into the loop and then a command C, which is essentially the body 
of this loop. And then finally, we have the more simple um, kind of command in this language, which is called skip. And skip does exactly what the name suggests, um, which is um, that it, it's doing nothing. And now you may wonder why on earth do we really need um, this uh, command called skip. And the reason is simply that we'll use this while defining the semantics of this language to say that nothing has to be done anymore. Instead of drawing all these nice syntax trees, I can also use a textual notation, which I'll just write down here. And as you'll see, it's much more compact than the notation um, where I'm explicitly drawing the trees. And I'm using this textual notation for the rest of the syntax. So in the textual notation, we will say that a command consists of either one command followed by a semicolon and then another command or by some label which um, gets assigned the value of an expression or an if statement where we have an if followed by a boolean expression and then a then branch where we execute c1 and an else branch where we execute c2 or a command can also be a while loop where we have while some boolean expression do some command C. And finally, a command can also just be a skip command. So now remember, we said a program can either be a command, an integer expression, or a Boolean expression. So let's also define the two kinds of um, commands that we have not yet defined here. And let's start with the integer expressions. So an integer expression is denoted with E. And now we use the textual syntax to define what kinds of integer expressions our language supports. So one of them is this exclamation mark followed by L, which essentially means we are loading the values stored at some location or denoted with some label. Um, or we can have an integer expression that is simply a number, or we can have a more complex integer expression by taking some expression and combining it through an operator with another expression. Now let's also look at what these different symbols mean. So first of all, this op can be one of the following operators. It could be a plus or a minus or multiplication or division. And then I'm using some more symbols here. So n is just any integer. L is a label or also called location within a set of um, memory locations L. So this um, is a set of locations L1, L2, oh, sorry, L0, L1 and so on of memory locations. And then I was using this notation with the exclamation mark, exclamation mark L. And this is a way to express that we are retrieving a value that is stored at a location L. So we're basically reading a value from memory. And finally, our language also has Boolean expressions. So let's also define how they look like. So a Boolean expression is denoted by capital B and it can either be true or false. So this is probably what you've expected. And then of course you can also uh, evaluate more complex expressions to either true or false by um, taking some integer expression E and combining it with a Boolean operator um, with some other integer expression. Or you can also negate a Boolean expression, or you can take the um, logical end of two Boolean expressions. And now I still need to tell you what these Boolean operators are. And in the simple language, there are three of them. One is greater than, the other is less than, and then we also have equals. So just um, 
note that for equals we just use the single equals here and for assignment we actually use um, the um, colon equals so just make sure that you do not confuse these two so now that we've defined the syntax of the language let's have a look at some programs written in this language um, so let's have a look at some examples so one um, program is the following where we say there is a variable z and we are ass assigning the value of x to it and then have a semicolon so we have some statements that follow afterwards and um, these will be two statements which just to um, show how this is passed into the abstract syntax tree I'll, I'll put parentheses around and the first of those is taking the value that is currently stored in y and assigns it to x and then the second statement is taking the value that is currently stored in z and assigns it to y. So now you can stop the video for a second and maybe think about what this program is actually doing. And what it is doing is to swap the values that are in x and y by using z just as a temporary variable. So now this uses a concrete syntax to write down um, a specific program. And um, once we have a program, we can represent it um, using our abstract syntax by drawing uh, an abstract syntax tree. So let's just do this. Um, the top level element here will be the semicolon, which is the first semicolon um, in the program. It has two children for the two commands that are chained together using this semicolon. And the first of them is this assignment that you see at the beginning where we have on the left side the variable z and on the right side this read of the variable x. And on the um, right side of this first um, sequence put together through a semicolon we have two more commands that each happen to be another assignment. One that assigns the value of y to x and another one that assigns the value of z to y. So this here now is the complete AST for this little simp program. As a second slightly more complex example let's have a look at a program that contains a loop and in the second example we're using then our while construct where we define some condition which here happens to be that the value of L needs to be larger than zero. And while this is the case, we want to do the following. So first of all, we want to assign something to um, a variable or label F, where we take the old value of F and then multiply it with the current value of L. And then after that, we are also updating L by taking the old value of L minus one. Now, if you look at this code, you'll probably see that this is the factorial function. Let's now have a look at how this is represented in our abstract syntax. And again, this is a point in the lecture where you may want to stop the video and just try it yourself and really draw it to double check that you've understood um, this, th these ideas. So the AST for this piece of code will have um, a while loop node at the very top because that's the um, outermost um, structural element here and then as you've seen while nodes have two children one for the condition and one for the body so the one for the condition happens to be a boolean expression which uses this boolean operator greater than which has two children um, namely um, the integer expression that will return the value of l and this other integer expression that returns just the number zero and then in the while loop we have a command and this command happens to be a sequence of two commands so we have the semicolon and each of these commands is an assignment one that assigns to f and on the right side we have some integer expression that evaluates to value that is then assigned to f and this integer expression uses this um, operator for multiplication which takes two operands, namely the value of f and the value of l. And now let's have a look at the 
uh, remaining part of the tree, so this other assignment, which is writing into location L. And what it is writing is also the result of an integer expression where we take the minus operator and apply it to the value of L and to one. All right, so this is already the end of the second part of the lecture on operational semantics. You now know the syntax of our little simple language. And in the next parts of the lecture, we'll actually assign some semantics, some meaning to the syntax so that we can um, also say what these programs really mean. So, so far we've only defined how programs look like and the next step is to define their meaning. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.